we will we will change the time schedule of the classes to 9 a.m. Eastern on the East Coast uh, and that will be every Sabbath so the Sabbath service and teaching will start 9 a.m. therefore if I do it earlier I can have more participation within it instead of me going every other week I can go every week with the Sabbath classes which is needed going forward so that will be 9 a.m. in the morning <clears throat> okay All right, one second here. All right, the next thing, or I have it, thank you. Okay, the next thing. Let's get Deuteronomy 6. Before we begin the class, every, every man amongst us will read out of the law. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6. I'll start at the, how many men we have in here today? Okay, good. A moment. All right. Every person take three verses, and the last person just go all the way out, okay? Deuteronomy 6, let's start at the first verse here. Now, these are the commandments. And the statutes and all the and the judgments which the Most High Ahiah commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Most High Ahiah to keep all of his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and ye may increase mightily, as the Most High, Ahiah, the God of the fathers, thy fathers have promised thee, and the land that floweth with milk and honey. Go ahead. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Most High, our power, Ahiah, is one power and thou shalt love the most high thy power with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart you can pick up with the seven verse and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Deuteronomy uh, 6, verse 10. And it shall be, when the Most High thy power shall have brought thee unto the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and the houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and well diddest which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then beware, lest thou forget the most high, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. Thou shalt fear the most high thy power and serve him, and shalt, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go up to other gods, of the gods of the people, which are around about you. The most high thy power is a jealous power among you. Least the anger of the most high thy power be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from the face of the earth. Verse 16. You shall not attempt the most high your power as you took on the Messiah. He shall diligently, diligently keep the commandments of the Most High in power, and his testimonies, and his statutes, which he hath commanded you. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Most High, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest go in, and possess the good land which the Most High swear unto thy fathers. Verse 19. To cast out all thy enemies from before thee, as the Most High has spoken. And when thy son asks thee in the time to come, saying, 
What means the testimony and the statute and the judgment which the Most High our power hath commanded thee? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We will Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt. And the Most High brought us out of out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 22. And the Most High showed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt and upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And Ahiah commanded us to do all these statutes to fear Ahiah, our power, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Ahiah, our power, as he had commanded us. Okay, what does it mean, real quick, and I'm going to go around the room, and anyone can answer. When we say the credo on uh, Sabbath, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. What does that mean? Anyone? Okay, speak up. I can't hear you. Uh, I, I can go into the scripture. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, first John 5 and 7. First John 5 and 7. Go ahead. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. What does that mean to Israel? First John 5 and 7. Um, it says, But there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So it's just showing that the, um, the, the order of things and how that they, they're one. Okay, so he's speaking to Israel, right? Yeah. So how do we apply that within the church and the understanding Christ brought? No, let me help you. Go to John 17. This is Christ's last prayer before he was crucified. This links directly with Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. So the mindset we must be in when we read, Heal Israel, the Lord our God is one, is John 17. Read John 17 and 11, uh, uh, Shapat. John chapter 17, verse 11. And now I am no more in the world. Yeshua says, now I am no more in the world. Remember when you brought out 1 John 5 and 7, which was correct. Which says that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. But Yeshua says, I'm no more in the world. Read. But these are in the world. But these are in the world. These were the disciples bringing forth the gospel. The truth that needed to be taught in this earth. Now, that's what I'm going to go into in a moment. The true gospel of Christ, because that is the true understanding that must be taught before the end. I'm going to give an example of that. Read. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name. Keep through thine own name. You see the importance of the Most High's name? Keep what? Keep through thine own name. Through your own name. Those whom thou hast given me. Those who was given to Christ. Read. That they may be one. That they may be one. As we are. As the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. See? So that's what Christ came. He came to bring us into that oneness. That was the true understanding of what we should have had in the Old Testament. But varied from. We were supposed to stay in league with what was going on in heaven. Thou shalt be done in earth as it is in heaven. So there was a disconnect from the heavenly and the earth that Christ had to bring back. And as you see, now that the gospel is being taught throughout the earth the way it was supposed to have been taught since Christ left, that the understanding is coming now of how they operated in the heavens. The holy days, the correct timeline in which the angels are actually dealing with the holy days. The Sabbath, 
how we must interact with each other. All those things is what Christ brought that made his doctrine different than all other doctrines of the Jews. Everything throughout the earth have already been taught. But why aren't we, why haven't we come to the end yet? Go to Matthew 24 and read that, what I, I gave you uh, in Matthew 24. 11? Yes. No, 14th 14. verse. Matthew 24 <clears throat> and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. In all the world, read. For a witness unto all nations. All nations will see this gospel taught throughout the whole earth. Read. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. Now, as we can see, there's Christian churches in every nation, in every country on earth, and we're still here. So obviously the gospel of the kingdom haven't been taught. But now, we've been going out throughout the earth teaching a certain doctrine. And when it gets to the remote parts of where our people reside, the end will come. Because all churches have varied from the doctrine of the kingdom. And you notice every radio show, everything I go on, it always comes back to who's God's people. Every place, it always comes back there because why? The gospel was to be taught to these people who were spread it throughout the four corners of the earth to let them know the kingdom is at hand. If you can't identify the people, you cannot teach the doctrine in the true gospel. Therefore, this world have bought time by not explaining that to the people, that their kingdom is at hand. Because soon as our people know, soon as what we're teaching is throughout the whole earth, then the end shall come. And what we're teaching is not just that we're Israel. That's not just what we're teaching. It's putting everybody back into that oneness of understanding our father, his name, his holy days, his ex what he expects from us to prepare us for the kingdom to come. And that's the, that's the key point. That's the myth through all the doctrines, including Israelites. It's deeper than who the white man is or who this is or who that is. It's bringing everyone back into that one. And never vary from that, never leave off from that understanding. That, that, that one is what keep us focused on what's needed to finish. Staying in that one. Now, before I go into the class, I wanted to show y'all something real quick. Because some people might ask, okay, teachers, bishops, deacons, elders, what's expected of them and understanding? Here's one facet I wanted to bring concerning that. I need you to go to Matthew 23 and 11. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11. Go ahead. But he that is greatest among you. When Christ left, speaking of that oneness in the gospel that he left. A matter of fact, fact, before we go there, before the greatest, let's go and show people the gospel that's supposed to be taught throughout the four corners of the earth. Go to Matthew 10, 5 and 6. This is the gospel that, that should be taught throughout the four corners of the earth. Matthew 10, 5 and 6, read it. These 12, Yeshua sent forth. And commanded them saying this was a command this is a commandment this is just like Moses at the Mount okay given do's and don'ts read and commanded them saying read go not into the way of the Gentiles that means the Gentiles cannot be the focal point of this gospel and that's the difference between what we're teaching and what they're teaching in the Christian churches the Gentiles is the focal point and not the lost sheep. So the gospel of the kingdom is not being taught. When, when I start asking, well, where's the lost sheep at? I get pushed back in an argument and people want to go the other way. When if that is not taught, the end will not come. See? Read. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Go ahead. 
and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. And we know, based on what we've been teaching the last couple of weeks in the academy, the Samaritans is where they set up the false doctrine within the land of Israel. That's, they were worshiping Satan from the northern kingdom. They set up sacrifices to Moloch and all that there. So by the time Christ was on the scene, all of those over in Samaria were already turned over to Satan. And these are the same doctrines that are set up in the same temples and the same gods they're worshiping in Israel today. Fallen angel doctrine, Canaanite doctrine. Read. Verse 6. But go rather. But I rather you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. To the what? To the lost sheep of the house of Israel. To the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So I would rather you focus on getting these lost sheep together. Read. Verse 7. And as you go. And as you go. Preach, saying. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now that's good news. I ask, you can even ask a Christian, well, what is the definition of gospel? They'll think that's music. Gospel ask actually means good news. So this gospel of the kingdom must be taught throughout the four corners of the earth. We must tell the lost sheep that their kingdom is coming. And in order for them to understand that there's a kingdom prepared for them, they must know that they are from the stock of Israel and a promise was given to their father, Abraham. Is that crystal clear? And it's that simple. It's not hard to, to teach the doctrine. It's fighting against all the other doctrines that's trying to stop this from being taught. Read. Uh, verse 8. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Now I understand why Yeshua gave us these key elements, these key powers in the spirit to do the doctrine when it says cast out devils. Based on everything I'm going into today, I understand why Christ gave us that understanding to cast out devils. Why? Because we're being overran by them. And, in, and, in, and in, at the end time when the gospel would be taught, it would be all about this mental illness and all this other stuff in which people are actually possessed with demons. So in order for you to actually teach the truth of that to them, they must be cleansed first of any spirits that are operating from the past. It's all part of the gospel. Read. Verse 9. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. Because why? Verse 10. Nor script for your journey. Why? Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. Why? For the workman is worthy of his meat. Because the Most High will put everything on that path while you're going. You don't got to prepare nothing. Anything you need to finish this will be put on the road. Perfect example of that, when, uh, when I left, I had two suitcases. Okay, so anything, you don't got to prepare. If you're on the road to do what the Most High wants you to do, everything going to be provided by you teaching the gospel, by you putting the word out, letting everyone understand what time we're in. He's going to put everything on the road, on the way, so that we'll know that this work is not of our own. So that we'll know that it came from the outside of us through the spirit of finishing his work. Okay? So there's no question that faith is working amongst the church. Because we stepped out and did things on total faith. And the Most High never reneged on anything he said he would do. We just have to finish. See? Let's go to uh, what I was mentioned in Matthew 23 and 11, because some people might ask, well, well, elders, deacons, or whatever the case is, what's the expectancy? Read. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11.
the heat that is greatest among you. So it doesn't matter how much knowledge or understanding or gifts you have or the most high put you in position to lead, whatever that is. He that is greatest among you shall be what? Shall be your servant. No one, anybody that's, that, 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 that have been gifted to, to finish this work shouldn't be served by people like they're some Lord. Like they got to be put up on some sticks and held up higher than others. That's what made Christ's doctrine different because he was amongst the people and operated with the brethren like brothers. And, and, it, and it showed up the Pharisees and scribes because they wanted to be honored as some gods. And they told Christ, with all this knowledge you have, why are you amongst the publicans, the sinners, the people that are, that, that, that are not like us? Come sit in the high seats. But I'm going to tell you this. Yes, the greatest among you shall be your servant. He should serve you. If you, you want something to eat? You want something to drink? Are you comfortable? That's what, that's what the greatest amongst the most highs servants do. They, they're not looking for people to hold them up as something great. But that is to be honored with respect. You understand? Because uh, some, someone that's really great have honor in serving other people. That's what satisfied them. Someone that the most high will use to do things, they would rather, they're happy doing things for other people. It's not the other way around. Because they understand that the blessings come from the most high if they serve. And it keeps that person in a humble state to understand that it's a privilege, that the most high could have killed any of us off at any time based on our sins. That keeps us humble. To saying, listen, you need some water? You need something to drink? You want something to eat? That's what, not, not knowing you come in the house, everybody's shaking like, oh, hey, let me grab your seat. Oh, you, can I grab your bag? Oh, can I do this? No, that's Pharisee and scribe. No, I can carry my own bag. I can grab my own seat. We should just be able to respect each other. That's what it comes down to. The greatest among you shall be what? But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Shall be your servant. That's why he asked Peter three times, do you really love me? And, and Peter said, yeah, I love you. You know I love you. Why do you keep asking me? He said, feed my sheep. You are here to serve the people. That's what you're here for. Now, does, it, does that mean that someone is supposed to take care of somebody? No. But if you see that they need some help, you're supposed to be there to help them. Read verse 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself. Whoever shall exalt himself to think anyone is higher than what the Most High made them. Read. Shall be abased. The Most High will bring you down. So that's just the reality of it. He's going to always bring you to the level of when you came to him in total sin. Okay, you're still a sinner. You're still the same person that I was going to kill. Just remember that. And you still, you still got a lot to do to cover a lot of that mess you did. So don't ever think that you are so high that the Most High can't bring you down. So that, that always puts one in the mindset of, I'm a servant. I'm a servant. I'm a servant. That's how we stay in the one. The angels stay in the one, understand it, that they're servants. And none of us have the power of an angel. And they serve. They serve. That's the mindset. We, we, we can't get into a mindset of privilege. We serve. Read. And he that shall humble himself. And he shall humble himself. Shall be exalted. Then the Most High will exalt you in due time. The exaltation and the notoriety don't come from it don't come from what you think is concerning your knowledge and understanding. It comes from the demeanor that someone can see the spirit of humility in the spirit of the most high within you. That's where all the notoriety comes. That's where the respect and the exaltation comes from. When they realize, oh man, his brother is just like everyone else. He's humble, he's he's level-headed. He's, you know, he, he's a good brother. That's what it comes down to. Or a good sister. Right? 
precept for that. Let's get Luke 22 and 28. Read that. Luke chapter 22, verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Go ahead. And I appointed unto you a kingdom, as my Father have appointed unto me. Read that again. Verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me. You are they that which continue with me, read, in my temptations. In my temptations. And I, I wanted to bring this out because the church is not portraying Christ in his proper light. Christ was tempted with every temptation a man goes through. And when he fell weak in certain areas, the brothers endured him. Read. Verse 29. And I appointed unto you a kingdom. And I appointed unto you a kingdom. As read. my father have appointed unto me. See that? Going into the one again. Read. Verse 30. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Judging who? The twelve tribes of Israel. Read that. Read on. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Here we go. Go to 26. Luke 22, verse 26. Go ahead. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you. He that is greatest among you. Let him be as the younger. Let him be as the younger. Let him operate with the brethren as if he's just with the brethren. And that's in humbleness and all that. Read. And he that is chief. And he that is chief. As he that doth serve. As he that do serve. And you notice when they came to get Yeshia. If it wasn't for Judas kissing him on the cheek, no one would have known the difference between, no one would have known who was Christ that night. Because he operated, he dressed like them, he operated with them. He wasn't, he wasn't sitting on some throne someplace. He was a brother. <laughs> right? And I wanted to put that out there. Right? Now we can actually go into my part of the class here. Going in to heal the sick. As being part of this uh, 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 teaching the gospel, right? I said that something earlier in my classes, I said that something happened in the earth in which there's an inordinate level of demon possession amongst the people, right? That cause attacks, battles, right? I need you to go to Enoch real quick. We're going to go to Enoch and Baruch, and we're going to link it up to today. We're going into the book of Enoch first. Then we're going into to Baruch. Now, I'm going into this because I don't know if anyone noticed in the earth today, there's a level of, a high level of impatience, a high level of attacks, in which we're not patient with each other. We immediately, there's people out there who was normally, you know, cool headed, going at each other's throats. Emotional impatience. All that is a sickness that have, that's plaguing the world. I don't know if people understand it or know it, but people are operating today with less patience and understanding for others. And it's immediately fights and immediately disagreements or arguments. And it started someplace. And I want to go there because right now all I'm hearing, uh, all I'm hearing amongst uh, in the United States and the UK and other places is what is the government is going to, what is the government prescription or what do they prescribe for mental illness? There's a high level, uh, 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 inordinate number of people with men mental illness that need to be dealt with from a governmental standpoint. 
we're going to go into the origin of these attacks and how we must be knowing that the world is filled mm. with demons that have now inhabited people. I need you to go to the book of Enoch. And start at 15 and 1. And, and to set the stage for those, for those who don't believe in the book of Enoch, there's nothing I can say about that. You know, I'm putting this out there to give an origin of why people are attacked by spirits. This world, science and education would like you to believe that there's no forces on the outside of us operating against us. So they'll, they'll say it's all in your head. It's all in how you was brought up or something. Try to make it where it's just uh, uh, a coincidence that people are going through uh, uh, unstable emotions without giving the world the understanding of demon possession and the origin of demonology. And see, and that's why we're going into Enoch because Enoch is the only book that explains why the Most High had to flood the earth. There's no information you can read in Scripture in detail to know exactly what happened before the flood. The only thing you really see in Genesis is that Noah built a boat. You don't understand the forces that caused the Most High to destroy the whole earth. And that's, on, that's purpose. The powers that control this world don't want you to know. So I'm not here to to try to validate the book of Enoch. I understand its value for those who don't. Hmm? Yeah, we're going to get that. Wow. But when you go into Enoch 15, it gives you the origin of when demons began to operate and possess people. It was one time in the earth before the flood, there was no such thing as demon possession. Something happened to cause demons. Demons have an origin. And, I, and just like anything, if you go to a doctor, and I'm just using this as an example, and, you're, and, and you have some sort of physical illness, usually they go to the origin of your illness to prescribe a cure for you. If there's no origin of your sickness, then the sickness will lie dormant and eventually kill you. So I take that same mentality when it comes to the Bible. If we are all talking about this battle against good and evil and the demon possessions and how it's affecting all of our societies and our families, but yet ignore the origin of spirits and how they operate. It's usually, it's usually we deal with the spirit after it's already operating, opposed to knowing its origin. Thereby, if we understand what it is and how it operates, we can keep our vessel to stop them from entering. See, this world don't want you to understand that. So setting this up, I'm going into Enoch 15. This is when the Most High translated Enoch before the throne. And now we speak it to Enoch to go back and speak to those angels that fell into the earth and taught mankind evil, uh, mankind and women evil. And they brought forth a hybrid spirit called Nephilim in the earth, a new being outside of the Most High's uh, 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 creation, outside of the Most High's quote unquote DNA. So now there's a new DNA operating in the earth against the Most High's creation. And Christ came into the earth to fight against this. So it's on a physical level and a spiritual level. Why? Because there was no such thing as all-out war until this happened. Until the fallen angels came to this earth and taught mankind things we shouldn't have known. All right? So this is what the Most High is saying to Enoch. Here's the origin of demons and why there's war and dis distress, destruction, attacks, emotional instability, and all that. And I'm putting this out there so that when we're caught up into this feeling that we need to attack and go against someone, 
Why don't we look within ourselves and say, you know what? There's something, something operating in me that's not me. Something got in. We never go there. It's about who's right or wrong. <laughs> but something wants you to keep attacking and attacking and attacking. What's that? Is that you? Is being right? Is, it's just about you being right. Or well, there's something else operating here. And I'm going into this mental illness thing because really what they're not telling the world is that there have been a, an inordinate number of demons released out of the pits that need bodies, that need hosts. And that's what's really going on with this mental illness. The majority of people are, are getting demon possessed so that they can fight against the elect. So they can fight against those who can see. That's really what's going on in the earth. That's being ignored. So to set the stage, I'm here, Enoch 15, and I'm going to start at the first verse. This is the most high from the heaven after translating Enoch into the heavens, giving him the understanding of what will happen to the fallen angel, angels and their children. Let's read it, starting with the first verse. Enoch chapter 15, verse 1. Go ahead. And he answered and said to me, and I heard his voice. Fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness. Approach hither and hear my voice. And go, say to the watchers of heaven. Say to the watchers of heaven. Watchers are angels. Who have sent thee to intercede for them. And for those who don't believe that watchers are angels, when they came to earth, they gave mankind the technology to put up satellites, which are called digital angels. And what do satellites do? Watch. So how can you believe in the artificial angels they've put out there and not believe in the original ones that were in the course of your satellites today? Okay. And these are for those who only believe in science. Where do you think they get the ideas to put satellites out the earth, outside the earth, to watch the earth? They, they're going in the same course as the fallen angels that fell before the flood. See? You see the value of Enoch now? Read that again. Verse 2. And go say to the watchers. And go say to the watchers, the original satellites, which were the spiritual satellites, which were angels. Of and, heaven. Of heaven. Who have sent thee to intercede for them. You should intercede for men and not men for you. Because the angels ask Enoch to go and petition before the Father to allow them re-entry into the heavens. And when Enoch came before the Father, he said, you tell those who supposed to have been, inter they, 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 they were supposed to be sending you messages, not the other way around. <laughs> so you tell those watchers that have fell to this earth, that earth. Read. Verse 3. And I'm going to tell you right now, the watchers of this earth, that fell to this earth, is all the idols that are being worshipped in all religions. They're, they're worshipping the fallen angels through idolatry. Through each idol, it links to one of the fallen angels. Okay. So, if, so for those who don't understand why when you go in a Catholic church, there's all these different saints and all these different idols and all that. Don't even understand, like, what do they got to do with connecting to the Most High? Remember, these angels used, used to intercede between the Most High and man. So now, in its place, they're using idols to do it. Fallen angels that used to intercede. Intercede. That's the reason for idolatry, and the most I hate idolatry, because those same fallen angels should not be worshipped. They should not be followed. They should not be acknowledged. They fell, but they are the kings and fathers of the royal bloodlines that are ru running this earth today. And that's what's being hid from you, and that, that's why they are acknowledging their fathers, the fallen angels, through idolatry. It's a bloodline. 
So if you see anyone with an idol, they're worshiping a fallen angel, period. Read verse 3. Wherefore have you left the high, holy, and eternal heaven? They left the heavens. And lain with women. And they came down and laid with women. And defiled yourselves with the daughters of men. And taken to yourselves wives. And done like the children of earth. And begotten giants as your sons. Verse 4. That's Nephilim in the earth. Now, they, now there's a new DNA in the earth called Nephilim. A new being that was created out of sin between what? The spiritual and the physical. Read. And though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life. Go ahead. You have defiled yourselves with the blood of women. Go ahead. And have begotten children with the blood of flesh. And as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood, as those also do who die and perish. Verse 5. Therefore have I given them wives also, that they might impregnate them and begat children by them, that thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth. Go ahead. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life and immortal for all generations of the world. Go ahead. And therefore I have not appointed wives for you, for as for the spiritual ones of the heaven, in heaven is their dwelling. And now the giants who are produced from the spirit. Now, now the most high. Now the giants, he's telling Enoch, now the giants that are produced from who? And now the giants who are produced from the spirit and flesh. They're produced from the celestial and the flesh of, of woman. Read. Shall be called evil spirits. They shall be called evil spirits. Now the most high is telling us how evil spirits entered the earth. So once these once the children of the uh, of the fallen angels die, their spirits will not go into habitations. Their spirits will stay within the earth. That's where your evil spirits come from. So when you're casting out demons or when people are operating with demons, this is an ancient spirit. Sons of the fallen angels with names. OK. That's who you're dealing with. And for those who think I've been here before, oh, I had another life and I can remember certain things. You, 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 you're not remembering anything. You're attached to an ancient demon that, that was in other people during the whole process of time through different generations. And they're in you, giving you the remembrance through their eyes, through their spirit. They're showing you the past. So you haven't been here before. You're being used by a spirit. That spirit been here before. And to prove that it has gained total power in you, you believe it was you that have been here before. It's demons. Read. They shall be called evil spirits. They shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. And on the earth shall be their dwelling. Go ahead. Verse 9. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men. And from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal, and primal origin. origin. Go ahead. They shall be evil spirits on earth and evil spirits shall they be called. Evil spirits shall they be called. Read. Verse 10. As for the spirits of heaven. So read that part about evil spirits shall they be called verse 9 evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men because they are born from men read and from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin this is where they come from this is their origin read they shall be evil spirits on earth go ahead and evil spirits shall they be called as for the spirits of heaven in heaven shall be their dwelling. Go ahead. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. Go ahead. Verse 11. And the spirits of the giants 
Afflict. They afflict. Oppress. Oppress. Destroy. Destroy. Attack. Attack. Do battle. Do battle. And work destruction on the earth. And work destruction on the earth. And cause trouble. And they cause trouble. Now check out this, what these spirits do. So anytime there's an attack, an argument, a fight, they're in it. Say what you want. They're in it. This is what they do. Okay? And keep in mind, the Most High, to cleanse the earth of them, he had an event happen in which they began to war against each other. And they were killed off in war. And the ones that were left died in the flood. And see, and that's where they get from Greek mythology, the clash of the titans. The Most High had them attack each other to preserve us. That, and when they died, they couldn't go into habitations like our spirits, like our fathers do. Our fathers, our mothers, they go into the bosom of Abraham and wait for their change. There was no place for these hybrids. So, the, so once they were killed off through the flood, they waited for more bodies. They waited for more people. See? And I know the Christian church, ah, oh, that can never happen. Angels can never sleep with women and that don't happen. And Enoch, I don't know. Why do you think they always say that? Why do you think they always go there? They don't want you to know how demons operate and where they come from. Because you have a prescription for getting rid of them because you understand their origin. So they've weakened you by making you think that if you believe that something don't it, something is not valid, <laughs> that that these spirits won't have no relevance against you. Okay, this is this is their play on you. Read. They take no food. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst. That's where fasting comes in. So if someone see themselves always attacking and battling and arguing and, and in Orton and beside themselves, right there the prescription is, okay, I'm feeding something. It's hungry and it's thirsty. I know that it's hungry and it's using me to eat. It's using me to drink. So if I know something is operating in me that's hungry and thirsty, I'm going to fast. Okay. Because if you're not feeding it, it's going to go and find someone else that's eating. See, I understand how they work. So I, if, I, if, if I notice, you know, I'm, I'm cranky or I'm not feeling a certain type of way, I'll be like, okay. Be like, nah, I ain't going to eat anything. Like, you want some meat? No, no, I'm good. Because I noticed that something else is operating outside of how I would normal, normally operate. I just cool down for a second a day or two and just eat little or eat light or nothing, and then I'm back to, to the way I need to be. You understand? That's the prescription of understanding that they are operating. And, and, and so many people, they're so far removed from reality. Everyone believes that they cannot be, not have a demon possession. Oh, not me. A demon can't attack me. You, you, you are sadly mistaken. You are sadly mistaken. There's more of them operating in this earth than us to some degree. It was a lot of them, millions, millions of them, in ranking orders. Okay, so if you, when you're feeling a certain type of way, and you out of the, you out of the spirit, or you're feeling dark, and you're feeling like, okay, I can't even try to do anything spiritual. Yeah, something is, something is there. Okay, something is there. Finish reading. And cause offenses. And cause offenses. Verse 12. It calls you to offend other people. Or become easily offended. Everything offend you now. No one can do anything unless you're offended. Offenses come from them. See? Because why? If you're in the spirit of the most high and have forgiveness, 
and know that people really don't mean you harm, you're not going to be offended over every little thing that someone, that someone does. Or if they do something wrong, you're going to forgive them if you're operating in a normal scenario. But if something is going on where there's an element outside of you working, then everything someone do, you're going to have a problem with. Okay? Or when someone do something to you, you you're going to just, just, uh, just go off on everyone. No, that's not you. That's a spirit. Read on. Verse 12. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men. And these spirits, which are, which are demons, shall rise up from the children of men. And I say this all, all the time for those who claim that it, it never happened. That angels didn't come down and sleep with women. Okay, then you tell me where did demons come from? You, you, you always claim that there's demons and spirits. Where did they come from? If there was no fallen angels and that didn't happen, where did the demons come from? Now, you know how Adam and Eve was created. Okay, they came into the earth. They, people, all right, we are a product of Adam and Eve. I know how we got here. How did they get here? So you would rather not even understand that, not even know that, not even deal with it. You would rather deal, with, deal in total ignorance than admit what, these, what our record, the records of our fathers like Enoch is telling us. You would rather just deal in total ignorance you can't knock something down, brothers or sisters, without understanding what belongs there. Okay? That means you're not qualified to say something is not right if you don't know what's right. <laughs> so if I tell you this is how they got here through Enoch, how can you say it, it didn't happen that way? What information? How did demons get here? Give me the, give me the chapters and verses. Of how demons got here. I see Christ casting them out. I see a demon uh, that, that Christ is dealing with when he says, have you come to judge me before my time? And he cast demons in the swine. Where did they come from? If you don't have Enoch, you have no idea where they came from. And therefore, if you don't have knowledge of them, the greatest power they have is to make you believe they don't exist. Or they have no origin. See? Finish reading. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the woman because they have proceeded from them. And they will always go into men and women and cause fights, arguments, all types of dissident within our society. This is what they will do until they're judged. Let's go to 2nd Baruch real quick. I know I was going to talk about the, uh, the war, but we're going to deal with that next week. I thought it was this, a teaching like this is, is more important. And, and also, I want to talk about that because one of the greatest spirits within these particular, the, 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 that these demons use so that we can fight against each other, they're whisperers and backbiters. One of the greatest, one of their greatest tools is to be like, yeah, 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 you check this out. Oh, I'm not feeling a certain type of way about this. Have you noticed that? I'm not, yeah, I'm feeling that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to look into that. Yeah, something ain't right there. The spirit ain't correct. Yeah, it's, what's going on here? What's going on where brothers and sisters got issues and they can't talk to the brother or sister they got issues with? And I'm just putting that out there. You cannot solve an issue talking to someone else about another person or about a situation. You must go to the person that's causing the issue to correct it. And that's why Christ told us how to deal with things. And I keep going back here over and over again because Christ told us what to do if we got art with a brother or sister. 
And that applies in or out of the church. If you got a problem with someone that's not in the church, you don't go and talk to somebody else about it. You go to that person because you want them to understand their error to walk right. I'm just putting that out there because all that is part of demon possession. Whispers and backbiters. Let's go to uh, Baruch 28 real quick. Baruch 22nd. Second Baruch. I'm in the pseudepigrapha of the Old Testament. And I need you to start at the 27th verse. 27th chapter. Yeah, go ahead. And he answered and said unto me. And Baruch was a scribe, and not only a scribe, he was actually a prophet of the Most High during the time of Jeremiah also. Right after Jeremiah, you had Baruch. Read. Into twelve parts is that time divided, and each one of them is reserved for that which is appointed for it. In the first part, there shall be the beginning of commotions. So in the first part, so through time, you're going to have these different elements operating in the earth that leads to the end. Now, as we can see, these fallen angels cause what? The, 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 the children of the fallen angels, which are demons, which were once Nephilim, but once Nephilim died, they, be, they became demons. See? Read. And then the second part. So the first thing, the first part is commotions. So these demons that are loose on the earth from the flood, operating on this side of the flood, cause commotions. What's the other part? And in the second part, there shall be slayings of the great ones. Slayings of the great ones. So these spirits are behind attacking and killing the prophets of the Most High, including Yeshia. And you noticed when Christ was born, who was there waiting to kill him all? Herod, the Idumean. He was a converted, he converted into Judaism, an Edomite, to be there to kill Christ from birth. Also, the spirit of Anunnaki, which was during the time of Egypt. When Moses were born, who was waiting to kill him? You're going to find these spirits are operating from high governmental seats in the earth to kill the elect and to slay the great ones. See? I hope this is all coming together for you here. The same way they were operating. They operated with the Greeks, the Romans. They operated with the Babylonians. They operated with the Egyptians to do what? To slay the, the great ones. To slay the prophets and teachers that were for the children of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why do you think they got this all CNI thing happening and this new world order thing in which they need everyone identified? Why? Because the only people that's going to be left are the elect, which they will look to slay. And it links into their demon possession because they're going to turn all the people that have the mark of the beast. You will be programmed to fight against the great ones. I hope this is all coming together for you. What this epic biblical episode is. Read. And in the third part, the fall of many by death. By the fall of many by death, and we're seeing that now, mainly through war. They're behind all the wars. Why do you think at every war when someone died, they say, well, this person gave the greatest sacrifice. Why do they use that word? Wars are used to sacrifice to the gods of that particular nation. That's all it is. The powers that be that are operating over the earth require blood sacrifice. So when you enlist in the war, expect to be one. When you enlist in their armies, you can be a sacrifice for their gods. Read. And in the fourth part, the sending of the sword. That's sending people off the war. As you can see, the demons are behind that. They are behind sending us off to war. Read. And in the fifth part, famine and the withholding of rain. See that? 
Now, how would the Bible know that they would have the technology to withhold rain? See? They use the harp system to withhold rain and cause famine and to make you think this is just organic that our people are dying over here, over there in Africa, in different parts of Africa. When the famines are engineered. See? They're attacking and they're slaying the great ones. Hope this is all coming together for you, that we are in a battle against unseen forces, against the demons that are pre-flood. Read. And in the sixth part, earthquakes and terrors. See that? Earthquakes and terrors. Earthquakes is what they're causing through fracking, drilling in the ground for what they call fuel. They're causing these earthquakes, brothers and sisters. And that's why Christ says at the very end, there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. The demon forces that are controlling this earth are causing them. Read. And in the eighth part, a multitude of specters and attacks of the shedding. It says a multitude of what? And in the eighth part. The, here's one of the most important parts. A multitude. Of, a multitude. That means an inordinate number of what? Of specters. Of specters. And attacks of the shedding. And attacks of the shedding. And you know I had to look these up. Specters and shedding are demons that at the very end there will be an inordinate attack of specters which are like ghosts or poltergeists which they'll be in your house and they, they won't leave your house and chittums which are demons inordinate number and a lot of people don't know brothers and sisters and that's why you got to be careful I always go back here you don't know what people have been doing in certain houses before you moved in so when it talks about attacks of the specters and jittim, it's talking about demons that, that are living in a house and that are trapped in a house bound by some type of spell a sorcerer or a witch did in that particular point because they trap demons in their houses to control them for their will it's part of sorcery black and white magic does it so they send demons to do their will and there are certain spells they do to trap them in certain areas and then they'll move out or die and some of them be like yeah this is a nice house and come in and sign the lease and, and, and they got another guy in there that's not paying the rent that's just operating up in there so you have to cleanse your place from spirits if it's not a new place because there will be an inordinate attack of specters in jittums. This is demon, a high level of an ordinate high level of demon possession. So if you think something was going on during crisis time, imagine a demon possession today. When the gospel and understanding of how to fight against these spirits is not taught in the earth at all. Read. And in the ninth part, the fall of fire. The fall of fire. We know those, those are bombs. Read. And in the tenth part, what's that? Rapine? Rapine. Rapine. Rapine and much oppression. And much oppression. That means inordinate oppression. And that's what's going on now. When people are losing their jobs, not being able to have a place to sleep or stay. I come to find out here last week now that now they got a law in the United States that's making homelessness a crime. And they're moving homeless people into camps now and shooting them with an RFID chip well guess what they're going to be doing that to a lot of people because everyone is about to lose their homes the society is not going to get better so now they're using homelessness as a prototype for rolling out the mark of the beast with the RFID chip that's what we're seeing here it was prophesied we're reading it Repeating in much oppression. And, and, and guess what? America is just a mirage. It's standing up. Its foundation is strong. It's propped up as if it's doing good when the majority of the United States is one step away from total oppression. Only thing they have to do is turn off the dollar. 
That's it. That whole mirage washed away. That's what's coming. Babylon the Great, it's fallen, it's fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. They're the spear, let me tell you, they're the forerunners for the demons that we read about pre-flood that Enoch identified. When it says they became the habitation of devils, they set up all types of vortexes and symbology throughout the whole United States to capture the ancient demons to help them rule the world. Okay? So that's what it meant in Revelations. They become the habitation of devils. So when the Masons went there, they captured all the ancient demons that were ruling in societies that helped Egypt rule, that helped Rome rule, and they trapped them within the United States to be used as a force of knowledge so that they can be the what? The jewel of the earth. See? So it's no coincidence now that in the United States they're saying, well, we have to do something about this mental illness. They know that something is going on where the majority of people are crazy because they made them that way. They made people emotionally unstable. They done destroyed the families. They done destroyed people. They, people don't know left from right, up from down, right from wrong. Because why? Emotionally unstable people are the prime candidates for demon possession. So now everyone can recognize that the majority of people have lost their minds due to, and it's engineered. Now they're looking to have everyone under some level of control because they know that they have achieved their goal in having the majority of the population demon possessed. So there's only one way out of this, and that's the most high. Through the Holy Spirit is the only way out of this demon possession. There's only one way out, and no one is telling you. You can't take a pill for this. So you must be sober-minded, you must, you, you, you must, your spirit must be, you, you, your sword must be sharp. You must have the understanding of what's going on in the earth. That's why it tells us we must be sober minded. Totally clear minded during this whole deal. Read. And in the 11th part, wickedness and unchastity. Wickedness and what? Unchastity. Unchastity, which everyone is now just dealing with everyone else. It's normal just to just go out and just lose yourself to another person. And in the twelfth part. In the twelfth part? Confusion from the mingling together of all those things aforesaid. aforesaid. And that's what they're doing now. The confusion now is because there's so many things operating. Brothers and sisters don't know left from right, up or down. Don't know what's right or wrong. Because everything is just coming. It's this, then it's that, then it's this, then that. And everybody was like, man, listen, I'm just going to give up. Not understanding it was prophesied that these things would be operating like this. Where you can see it and understand, all right, we're in the time. This is the time in preparation for the kingdom. Christ is coming. Read. For these parts of that time are reserved and shall be mingled one with another and minister one to another. For some shall leave out some of their own and receive in its stead from others, and some complete their own and that of others, so that these may not understand who are upon the earth in those days, that this is the consummation of the time. So those who are understanding that are sober minded will understand that, you know what? This is what the Most High was talking about. This is a consummation of the times, the time of the Gentiles and the time of, of, of the fallen angels, children's demonic rule is at an end, will soon be at an end. The closer we get to that judgment, the time of our, our, our Savior, the more confusion will enter the earth. You're going to see a lot of things that are totally confusing up from down, left from right. You're going to start seeing men with men, women with women running around in high positions as if it's normal. 
I'm just giving an example of just Sodom and Gomorrah, if you read it in, in Genesis. That now, we're looking at it now, and it's like, okay, a man with a man, a woman and a woman, okay, I see that all the time. That's not normal. And anybody have relegated their, their morality compass to the degree in which you are now accepting that and say, well, okay, well, to each his own. You've already been conditioned for destruction. Because these people, sodomites, are crazy. All right? There's no in, ins or outs about it. These people are crazy. The Bible tells us that, especially one that don't even have no conscience towards the Most High. They're crazy. So for you to accept and say, listen, you, you got just a crazy person operating amongst you and you say, well, it's, that's normal. That to show you that you've already been compromised. Because when there's an attack of the specters and chittums, you know they're going to use these homosexuals who are already emotionally unstable. See? They are built in ticking time bombs all amongst our societies. I'm just pointing out one of many elements of immorality that we accept as normal behavior. Okay? I'm, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm just on that note. No, I don't have gay or homosexual friends, and neither will I ever have them. And I don't think that's a line that we can put out there, oh yeah, I've got gay friends. No. I, will, I won't have them. Now, Maybe there's someone that used to deal with that, have repented from that. Yeah, I may have a friend like that. But no. And I'm just putting it out there because this new line, it used to be out there, just on this note, it used to be out there where people say, well, yeah, I got black friends. Remember that line? <laughs> you don't even hear that one no more. They didn't just moved us out of the, the equation. Oh, yeah, I have gay friends. No, we don't have gay friends or homosexual friends, okay? Neither do we wish to have them. Let me put that out there because we know that they are ticking time bombs by the Nephilim and fallen angels operating within our system to be used against us in due time. And that's what the Greeks and Romans were. They were against the Most High, inordinate, and had inordinate affections one towards another because they were being used by these spirits. And all of these spirits that came in the earth from the fallen angels, a lot of them had both sexual organs, hermaphrodites. And see, and that's the skewing of the Most High's creation. See? So, of course, at the very end, they have a president, they have all these people in place that, well, oh, yeah, LBGT, yeah. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, they got about... 20 alphabets for this group. Because, and, and, and what we're showing you here, brothers and sisters, is Sodom and Gomorrah again. We're here. So not only are we being attacked, we, we, our, our members are being, just being attacked, and, and we have to keep ourselves in some type of check because they're looking to destroy us. Then they got a physical element within our system that are operating against us too. That, that's against the most high, that hate the most high. Read on. Uh, that's it. That's it. Let, let's get the one you had before we, we ended out, then I'll answer a few questions. When it talks about <laughs> patience, possess. Yes. And I notice in the academy, normally we do have what you would call Sodom watch in the academy, and we do that on purpose to let everyone know we have an eye on these sodomites that are pedophiles and operating and doing all types of nastiness all within our society as we like we don't see it. And we, we, we're going to put it out there. We notice the sodomite imposition against the most high's creation, and we're pointing it out that pedophilia, emotional instability, uh, uh, family destruction, all that goes into that behavior, that homosexuality. That we identifying your hand and everything, understanding that you're being used just like the sodomites that were destroyed during the time of Lot.
Mm-hmm. What you have? Uh, Luke, just the one he's talking about being patient. Yes. Luke 21, verse 19. In your patience, possess ye your soul. In your what? In your patience, possess ye your soul. In your patience, possess ye your soul. Why does it say in your patience? We're dealing in a, in a world of total, it's, it's, it's total, a totally dysfunctional world. So, we're, so, so that these things can't attack us, we have to be patient when we see certain things and not, and not be coaxed into that circle of fighting and destroying. We're the ones on the outside looking in and saying, well, listen, I'm not a part of that. I'm, I'm being patient. I understand what's going on here. You're not drawing me in. Children of Nephilim, Amaphrodites, Satanist, you're not drawing me in. So with patience, Yeshua says, possess ye your souls. Because it only takes one time for them to draw you into something you can't get out of. It only takes one time. And then you're in the midst of a death angel operating. And you're in the midst of a situation in which you can lose your life right there. Because you, you didn't see it for what it, is, what it was. Read what you have. I need you to go to Titus real quick. Mm -hmm. Titus 2 and 1. Let's read it. Titus chapter 2 verse 1. Here's the prescription. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Which speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That the aged men be sober. The aged men be sober. Grave. Grave. Temperate. Temperate, that means there sh always should be a level in which you don't lose your top. Sound in faith. Sound in faith. In charity. In charity. In patience. And have patience. The aged woman likewise. And you, you know when it's hard to have patience? The toughest time to have patience, the hardest time to have patience, when you know you're right. Hmm. That's, the th that, that, that's the test right there. When you know you're right and someone else is wrong. Read on. Verse 3. The aged woman likewise. The aged woman likewise. That they be in behavior as becometh holiness. That the women be in a behavior as becometh holiness. That holiness, another word for holiness is trueness. Which is honesty. Read. Not false accusers. Not blaming someone for something they're not doing. Or assume something. And because you don't know, you're making something up. Making false assumptions because there's an element, a gray area. You got to always give another person the benefit of the doubt. That it's not what you're thinking. It's not what you're seeing. Until you know. Now when they do it and you can see it and it's against the scriptures, now you can answer to it. But so many people want to look into things and try to come to a conclusion. And the Bible calls that an evil eye. If your eye is evil, your whole body's evil. That means if you think something and you're not sure about it and you're, you're convinced it's that way, you're going to treat that person according to how you're viewing them. Even though your view could be false. If your eye is evil, your whole body will react to your assumptions. Never assume anything. Because one of those guys is probably operating there next to you. Whispering something. Oh yeah, what do you think? Yeah, it could be that, can it? Yeah, it's that. Yeah, it could be that. And you treating somebody like, yeah, did I do something to you? Well, well no, you ain't doing nothing to me. Just, you know, I'm not feeling right today. And they got a problem with you. You, you did nothing to this person. <laughs> it's another guy operating. It, children of fallen angels right next to you somewhere. Because if, if you feel a certain type of way about your own brother or sister and they did nothing to you, one of those guys is next to you. Read on. Not false accusers. Read it again. Verse 3, from the top. No, not what? 
the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Go ahead. Not false accusations. Not making accusations or saying, well, it could be that way. Well, I'm going to be looking at that because I'm, I'm, I'm looking into it. You ain't looking into nothing. You start in trouble. If you don't know, it, it, it didn't happen. Read. Not given to much wine. Not given to much wine. Get to the point. And wine is good to, to a certain degree. It's good for the belly. It tells you. But too much wine can have it where you operate with one of those guys. That was before the flood. And then conversations start going places that ain't supposed to go. Why? Because you're, you are not alone. <laughs> so that's someone understanding the threshold of their wine intake. Some people can't drink at all. And you must know yourself and know that you can't drink at all. If it makes it where that host, you actually a host for someone operating it. Read. Teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. And that's the key thing that got to be taught to the young women. But keep the young women great and understanding the importance that she's the rock, the, the, the glue that, that's holding that the whole family together. And she should never lose sight of her power and what her function is that makes her relevant. According to the most high. Well, according to this world, if you're dealing with your children and dealing with your husband, then you're weak. They make you think that's weak when that's the strongest woman on earth. That can keep a family. Read. Verse 5. To be discreet. To be discreet. Chaste. Chaste. Keepers at home. Good obedient to their own husbands that the word of the most high be not blasphemed why why did it say the word of the most high be not blasphemed because people will look at it and say well listen they're in the most high but i don't what i'm seeing according to a family in the bible that ain't what i'm seeing now people start questioning whether or not they're dealing with the most high or question the god that they claim they're serving Read verse 6. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. Young men must be sober minded. So it's not about getting drunk. Read. In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine. That's key. Read. Showing uncorruptness. Showing that you haven't been corrupted. Read. Gravity. Make sure you're, you have gravity as an example of according to what the Most High say you should be. Read. Sincerity. Sincerity, read. Sound speech. Sound speech. That cannot be condemned. Read. That he that is of the country part may be ashamed. That means if someone is going against you, you're so, you, you're so grounded in how you're operating it's making the person that's operating another way ashamed that they even felt a certain type of way or they even going against you because you're great, you're sound. But if you got two people that's unstable, then that's just two people continuing to making two people unstable. On and on and on. You have to have someone that's that with gravity. Someone that's stable who can correct others. Read. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the country part may be ashamed. Go ahead. Having no evil thing to say of you, exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again. Now, when it talks about servants and masters, the only, the way you translate that today is employer, employee. Because that's all it is. It's someone that's bound by contract working for another person. And I know because we went through that slavery thing. When we see masters, we think of roots and whips. But no, it's just speaking of employment. Of how to work if you're in a position of authority and you have employees. 
or someone hired to do a job by you, how you should treat them. Okay? Read verse 10. Not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of the Most High, our Savior, in all things. Go ahead. For the grace of our power that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great power and our Savior, Yeshua Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exalt and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Let no man despise that gravity, the spirit of Christ that's within you. Let no man take that away. With that, we're going to answer a few questions, and we're going to wish you all Godspeed and do the Lord's Prayer. We're actually going to do an anointment today also. Can you grab the olive oil for me, please? Your favorite, Kuda, can you just put a little oil on everyone's head for me? Okay, let's answer one question at a time here. What's the first? First one is, how was the extra biblical records found? Book of Enoch, Jubilee, Jasher, and Zedekite works. Oh, good question. The, that, that information was found in the, in the scrolls, in the Crumrum Caves. The Most High put a spirit on what they call the Essenes to take the original the original scripts, manuscripts that were from the Old Testament that had no Greek or Roman influence and write it down and put it in earthy pots. Linking into Revelations 12 when it says at the end, uh, the earth will help the woman swallow up the flood that came from the serpent. The flood is the lies and doctrine that came through the Christian church, uh, predominantly Catholicism, which is the mother of all the Christian churches from the Western world. All the churches within the Western world have some influence of the serpent's doctrine. So when the Most High put a spirit on the Essenes to put it in earthy pots, he knew that they would find it at a certain time, and no one can look back and say, well, this information was tampered with. Because that's an excuse people use not to deal with the Bible. Well, how can you say this stuff was tampered with when it was in the earth and no man touched it up until our time? So that, that kills that tampered excuse people have not to follow the word mm -hmm. and with that information it gives us identity it, it helps us identify the origin of evil and the powers that our officials or our what you would call spiritual leaders are looking to hide they don't want you they, they, would, they would make you believe that there's a separation between uh, politics or the government's and the religious aspect, when your government is a religious institution in itself, worshiping Satan and fallen angels, and using demons to have people serve them under government. Uh, next question. What do you think about people's testimony visiting hell and being shown by AKA Jesus? They haven't been shown hell from Jesus, okay? Now, what I can say is there's no such word as Jesus because there was no J's during Christ's time. But I'm not one to deny someone's testimony concerning what they claim they have seen. I mean, when I look at the Apocalypse of Paul, the Most High showed Paul hell. He showed them all seven hells and what goes on there. And he showed them paradise. So I, so I know that there are some people that go through certain things in which they are moved to see that, that I would call uh, that dimension. Some people see it through getting high. There's certain type of drugs that opens up that gate. 
to have you see those things. Drugs back then in, 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 in ancient times wasn't used for parties and social get together. It was used to dabble into the spirit world where the demons operate. That's what the drugs are for. They have actually made it past safe for parties because they want more and more people to operate with these demons. But at one time, drugs were simply, those particular type of drugs were serial, ceremonial for the leaders of this earth to operate with the demons. It gave them a direct connection to them. All right? So in these testimonies, there's other questions that need to be asked. Were you high? Did, did you do drugs? What's going on there? There's other elements that they want to leave out. She want to tell you, I've been there. I know it exists. I don't need no testimony to know hell is real. I know hell is real. Okay, so I, if they say it happened, I'm not going to question their testimony. But I see some people that make that the gospel. Oh, I didn't see hell and let me write a book. No, <laughs> you didn't see hell so that you can go write a book and tell people you've seen something. The Most High gave you an opportunity to repent and come to the true gospel and understanding of him and follow his commandments. He scared you into doing what was right. Not so you can get some notoriety as someone seeing something no one else has seen. And that's what I hate about what goes on in the Christian church. They take one little piece and try to make a career out of it. And that ain't the point about it. The Most High didn't have you see hell so you can, so you can go at some lectures. He did it because it's something that you were dealing with that you needed to clean up. Uh, someone asked, can you list all the books of the prophets and every relevant book you have and know of that I can use and study from? I don't know how long you've been. Oh, I don't know if you, how long you, if you're fairly new, I would say just stick with the Bible. You could bring in Enoch and Jasher with that and just study that. On our website, gatheringofchrist.org, I don't know if you have uh, been there, but usually there's a reference of books and a lot of, a plethora of information you can actually get there. But I, I'm going to tell you, be careful. Because I see some people, they, they, they see the wealth of knowledge in certain books. And they think that, okay, I can get my ilk or my, I can get my individuality by going into a book no one else has went through. Yeah, hey, Elder, you seen that? You ain't see that though, do you ever? I got some knowledge. Well, listen to me, brothers and sisters. I'm going to be straight with you. I can tell you what books not to read because I've went through all of them. All the New Testament apocryphal books are wrong, except a few. The book of Nicodemus is good. The apocalypse of Paul is good. But the rest of the New Testament that you may find out there is second century, first century plagiarism. It's what the Catholic Church used to make a canon so that they can control what the people could read. So they put out false information with titles of, 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 of prophets and teachers and disciples on purpose mm -hmm. so that they can become the authority and say, well, you can't read anything because that stuff is out there. So we're going to tell you what to read. That's the New Testament books outside. The outside the Bible. Just, just like the, uh, the Testament of Barnabas. The Testament of Barnabas, the Gospel of Barnabas wasn't created until the 8th century after Islam was already on the scene. And guess who's pulling out the, the Gospel of Barnabas? Muslims. Why? Because it's, it's saying, listen, that's a contradiction. That's, Barnabas hung out with Paul. Well, why, was the, why wasn't Barnabas, why Barnabas' book didn't pop up till after Islam was on the earth? Come on with that mess. We all know that the book of Barnabas is garbage. But I'm just going into, brothers and sisters, there's enough in the Bible itself mm -hmm. that, we have, that we haven't come to understand yet. Mm -hmm. Don't go into a frenzy with all these different books and you don't got the fundamental foundation of the Bible and the gospel of the Bible and the doctrine of the Bible intact first. Because if you don't know the, the, the doctrine, you, there's no reason to go into these books. You have no idea why you're going there. The Bible drives you to find information that verify its information. Read the Bible. It's the Bible that says, told me that it was written in the book of Jasher. The Bible pointed me to the book of Jasher. See? Because some people go into all these other books and saying, well, yeah, yeah, there's some other books too. 
Next thing you know, they're not reading the Bible at all and dealing with some madness because they got a few of those guys around them that we talked about that was pre-flood. Hanging out with the, yeah, you, they, they hanging out with you too. Yeah, you heard this book. And be like, yeah, my inner self just told me about this book that I never knew about. Let me go into the book of the, the, the Goetia of the dead from the seventh hell. And, uh, you know, because I, I'm, 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 I'm seeing something different when I'm looking at this Bible now. But it's you and the guys, okay, that no one can see that have guided you to these other books. So be careful. Stick with the Bible and what the Bible refers you to. Okay, it's not hard. I didn't come up, I, you know, I'm not no high guy. Who, yeah, I know this book and I got this book. The Bible directed me to Jasher. That was the Holy Spirit that said, it's written up in the book of Jasher. I found an original print that was actually the original translation that came from out of the ground. And it was one company in, 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 in Utah that was actually reprinting original books. And when I started getting it for black people, all of a sudden this company just went out of business. So it was black people wasn't supposed to read that. <laughs> you understand? Um, same thing with Enoch. When I seen Jude quoting Enoch and said that he left this testimony, I'm like, here's a disciple of Christ. New Testament. New Testament. Identifying a record. And, and knowing and telling us that's who we're fighting against. Mm. And that Enoch prophesied of these. Mm. Okay. Christ knew of this. There's something in Enoch that we must know. How can we go into the Bible and, and Matthew, where, in Matthew 24 where it says, uh, As it was in the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the Son of Man be. If you don't know what was going on during Noah's time. Mm. So obviously, that was a key part of the doctrine that was hid from us so that we couldn't understand that we're at the end, the same way Noah was at the end, fighting against these same Nephilim spirits. Same, let me tell you, there's nothing new under the sun. There's no new demons we're, we're fighting against, brothers and sisters. It's the same spirits from generation to generation. What's next? We can only do a few more. Okay. Uh, this is the next one, but I wanted to jump down to this one here. Go ahead. Someone says, hi, I'm 15 years old from southern Louisiana, and I have been following this type of information since I was 12. Praise the Most High. I was wondering if since I have not been baptized, I cannot go to heaven. Well, give us your information, the information of your parents. There's some water in Louisiana that we can put you in. So don't worry about that. You're going to heaven. You will be put in that water. Someone says, uh, if I was born in El Salvador, but most of my father's family was born in Belize, what tribe am I part of? Belize, Belize is uh, near, near Panama, right? It's, uh, South America. Yeah. South America. South America. That's near Panama. No, no, no. That Belize would be uh Yeah, that would be Pan that, that 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 would be Zebulun. If you're from Belize, you're Zebulun. Originally, if you're from Belize, you're Zebulun. What's next? Someone says, "The water elder, you mentioned that we should cleanse our house before moving in. How do we do that?" Well, what we do is we say a prayer and and it, a higher by Hashem Yeshaya what we are we say a prayer in the house in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and ask to rid, ask the Most High to rid any, any evil spirits from the house. You understand? Uh, the other thing is you put olive oil on the doorpost and you do your prayers in the house. The Most High, in the name of Christ and the Holy Spirit, we rid all spirits from the presence of this house. And you, just, you anoint the doorpost like the priest. What, what's next? Someone says, um, the water for the lesson, Elder, I remember hearing you say that the daughters of Zion had long hair to their feet before the curse in this Isaiah. Can I see that scripture about the long hair, please? Well, the scripture is actually within what Isaiah 3, 
when it says that instead of long hair, there should be baldness, a scab, where that letting you know that your hair can only go to a certain length. It's there in Isaiah 3, when, when other nations don't have that same struggle. But when Yeshia returned, that, that beauty will be given back. Okay, and that's why I tell you in Isaiah thir the third chapter that your, that your nakedness shall be showed. Why? Because the, the hair was so long, it would cover the woman's whole back, back body. That's how long it was. Okay, and then she became haughty against her husband. It tell you that. She started using her beauty against her husband. And the Most High struck our women with a scab, which is... A certain length that it get to so the scripture that they hear was long is actually in the, in, in the scripture you quoted mm -hmm. what's next uh, but it's okay it's okay because after the curse we get it all back and, and we find that there's something greater than outer beauty anyway there's something greater than the outward man anyway so that's why it tells us in, in, in Timothy don't let your beauty be the adorning of the outward anyone can do things to get their hair long or whatever the case is don't let that be who you are spiritually that's the key what's next someone says brothers how do you heal someone who is depressed you heal someone who is depressed they would have to go to elders and explain the origin of their depression you got to talk out what the issue is, what happened, and then 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 work to correct those things. Have your prayer and have any spirits that entered in at that point of when that depression started banished out. And if there's certain things you did wrong to cause that, that's the spirit giving you the emotions to go back and to correct your wrong. Some people are depressed because there's things unfinished. <clears throat> You have to go back and correct some of the things you did wrong. Someone asks, what book can I get that shows how the giants survived after, I guess that's supposed to say, the flood? There is no book to show how they survived after the flood. Because don't forget, the giants died and became evil spirits. The book that you can get to show that it happened after the flood too is in Genesis 6 when it says let's get it when it says and, and afterwards it tell you in Genesis 6 that it happened afterwards also read the fourth and fourth verse Genesis 6 and 4 Genesis chapter 6 verse 4 there were giants in the earth in those days there was giants in the earth in those days and also after that and also after that so it's showing you the giants not only was before the flood that they came in after that too on the other side of the flood so what happened on the first side of the flood before the flood happened again on the other side it's in the same chapter what's next someone says is it safe to come east now Yes, safe to come east now. What's next? Someone says, the water elder, good lesson. You're always on point. All praises be to the most high. It's the 15. Okay, next one. My grandma had a stroke seven years ago, and since then, she has ever, she I guess, never recovered. I suspect that this is a spiritual attack, but how can I help her when she does not speak English and she is Muslim? Well, you just have to pray for her and help help her with her what she's going through physically. Help her. A lot of our people are catching strokes and all those other things based on uh, our eating habits, the vaccines, poisons they've given us, the medication they've given us that actually cut off circulation to do th certain things to our brain. So the best thing to do is to come off the prescribed medicines and stick with the most highs medication, which is good food. Okay, I don't even know why we call it medicine when really it was the foods that kept us kept kept us health, healthy. Our dependent on modern medicine is what caused the illnesses in early death. 
So the best thing to do for your grandmother is to pray for her and help her in her ills. Help her, help her health-wise. Give her certain things health-wise. Find what herbs that can heal her mind. Find what different types of things that can naturally heal her and pray for her until the Most High restore those things back. It's counterproductive if you're taking herbs and all these things and then there's medication out there that's actually undoing everything the good stuff is doing. So the best thing to do and where you can start is looking at medicine cabinet sure. and write down the name of those prescriptions and go online and check out the side effects of those prescriptions. And if she's exhibiting the side effects, you know what the issues are. So always go to the root. Usually it's these medications that are keeping us in this state because the body, that the temple the Most High gave us is a masterful machine. And if it have the right things in it, there's nothing, there's nothing, everything is curable. There's no such thing as something that can't be cured. If the body have a chance to work without the outside stuff affecting it. All right. So go into the medicine cabinet and make sure that 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 people that's giving these pills are not just slowly killing her. First, cut off all the things that are harming her first, then she'll come back to her right mind and things of that nature and start getting healthy. All right. Okay, we got a request for a prayer that, 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 okay, the financial hardship. All right, we'll say a prayer for that. Was Christ three days and three nights, 3,000 years? No, that was three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. Okay. All right. We just gonna do an anointment for the whole church. Everyone have oil on them? And we're gonna do you got some? That's what I need for. The one. 